price gougers, robocallers, scammers, you know they all want your money and they're coming at you from everywhere. We want you to know how to protect yourself. So we have North Carolina Attorney General Josh Stein with us here today. He's taking all of your consumer related questions. Here's how you get your question to him. What you do is you text us at 336-379-5775. Remember this is a text only, don't call, but it is anonymous. So ask whatever it is that's on your mind and then you can get the answer in real time. All right, first and foremost with Valentine's Day, like right around the corner, let's talk about these romance scams. They're absolutely heartbreaking. Tanya, it's always great to be with you. Yeah, Valentine's Day is next week and we want everybody to have a happy, uh, loving relationship. And unfortunately, there are truly heartless people who will use the internet to pretend to be someone they're not, say that they're in an Air Force base in Afghanistan or now, I guess, in Iraq, or they're on an oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico. For some reason, they cannot come see you but they have a handsome profile picture and they email with the person over and over again for months and build that relationship. And then they strike and they ask for money. They ask for money to come visit you or some crisis has occurred and they're about to go to jail and they need your help to keep them out. Something that plays on your heartstrings. Our office has received about 50 to 60 of these complaints every year for the last couple of years. And the average loss, Tanya, is $50,000. So this is a massive scam that is doubly heartbreaking because it empties the person's bank account and it empties their heart. Yeah, and it's one of those ones where you think you're having a relationship with someone, but there are always some red flags. Number one, that you don't ever see them face to face, even over FaceTime or Zoom or anything. That's right. It's always a profile picture and it's always someone who's handsome. They're very charming when they communicate with you, but they talk about coming to see you, but something always comes up that prevents them from seeing you or from FaceTiming you, like you said. They will often ask for money in the form of gift cards or cryptocurrency or something very off um, because they don't want to be traceable whenever you do discover that it was a scam. All right, and that can be something where, you know, it's really hard to own up to that. So talk to someone before it gets to the point of you giving money. But that's one of the big things that you talk about is run it by someone else, a friend, a family member, someone. And a particularly shameful twist on this is that they'll actually get the person to engage in online uh, romance and sometimes be put in compromising positions and then they'll get blackmailed for the photographs that were taken. So folks just need to be very wary. You have no idea who's on the other side of that computer screen. And if you have any doubt whatsoever, do exactly what Tanya just said, talk to somebody. Even if you're embarrassed, it's much better to get beyond whatever scam you are trapped in. All right, let's talk about price gouging, especially with all these people wanting at home COVID tests or masks or things of that nature. What have you been seeing? We've been seeing dozens of complaints around COVID. By the way, the law is triggered whenever they were in a state of emergency and we are all in one now in North Carolina. So the law is in effect. That means that if there's a storm that comes and people start ripping you off because you need you know, a heater or gasoline or whatever else, the law is in effect. And uh, for COVID, if, if everyone needs these tests and they're difficult to come by. And if a seller is out there charging some outrageous price for those tests, they are subject to our law. All right, and so what do people need to do if they want to report price gouging? How do they know it's price gouging? Because so often people are like, any price that is more than I think it should be is price gouging. Yeah, the standard is an unreasonably excessive price on something that we need for our lives. So that's not obvious, that's not, immediately knowable. So a lot of people won't know for sure whether what they are seeing is in fact price gouging. So what we ask people to do is go ahead and file a complaint. It's very easy. To the extent you know what the price was before the emergency, make note of that. Take a picture or show your receipt of what it cost you and then share that information with our office. It's very easy to do online, ncdoj.gov slash gouging. We will then investigate that complaint. And when we see price gouging, we will not hesitate to act. I mean, we've brought a number of cases, probably uh, a, over a dozen involving more than two dozen 
defendants. And so far in the last few years, we've won settlements and awards recoveries in excess of a million dollars. And almost all of that money goes back to helping the affected consumers. Okay. Um, let's also um, talk about what's happened recently when it comes to robocalls. Just recently, you have uh, started a lawsuit against a company in Texas and kind of do the whole thing of how you got to the company in Texas, because they're not the person who called the person who called the person who called the person. Yeah, the, this issue of robocalls is the number one issue my office receives calls on. Number one complaint we get. Everyone hates them. They drive us crazy. Uh, but they exist to prey on vulnerable people. We received about 10,000 complaints last year. Um, the estimates are there were 21 billion scam robocalls last year that resulted in folks losing nearly $30 billion. That's why the calls exist, is to steal vast sums of money from very vulnerable folks. I've been working with a coalition of attorneys general, bipartisan, to work with the phone companies to get them to put technology to screen out more of these calls from ever reaching our phone, or when they do come through, have some sort of spam alert notification to inform us. We've been also urging them to cooperate with our investigations, and I'll talk about that in a moment. We've been urging the FCC and other federal agencies to take quicker steps to put into, protect, put into place protections for us. I led a 51 AG coalition to urge them to require stir shaken to be instituted by all phone companies this summer rather than the summer of 2023. And we prevailed. They accelerated that deadline. And that's a good thing to fight spoofing when uh, robocallers misrepresent where they're calling from. We are also going after the robocallers whenever we can find them. And what's new is this case that I brought a, a couple of weeks ago against a company called Articulate and a man named Paul Talbot. They're out of Texas. And they're not the robocaller. They're not the ones selling you a, a warranty or pretending to be the Social Security Administration and, and threatening to uh, charge you taxes unless you pay them money. They are the phone company that is the gateway that these international robocallers use to get into the American phone system and ultimately on your telephone yourself. So I've taken them to court to hold them accountable for the role that they play in the process of robocalls. All right, well, we got some calls on in text about price gouging and robocalls and other things. We're gonna be right back with your text questions.